Howdy folks, I'm Howdy going to uh, go over a bit about the King's uh, Quickie Mark II camper and the issues that I've had with it. Uh, all in all, it's, it's really good. Um, I've done about uh, two, between two and three thousand kilometres on dirt roads over the last few weeks and uh, we've actually haven't purchased it as a as something for for leisure more so it's been um it's a it's a work tool so we use it for traveling in remote areas and and that's remote areas in new south wales uh, around louth tilpa wanaring tiverborough uh, up past burke so all those dirt roads that don't get a lot of use and uh, in pretty pretty average condition a lot of the dirt roads so it's just mounted on a, uh, a Ford Ranger just uh, an older Ford Ranger a 2008 model now the issues that I've had with this camper have only been minor uh, found all of the zips and everything to be fantastic the fly screens the uh, the sealability there's been uh, almost no dust ingression when it's um, when it's packed up and you're travelling along so that's really good it's fantastic because I've been on a lot of roads with a lot of bull dust so really fine dust however uh, the issues that I have had I'll just uh, see if I can flick the camera around so up in here you've got these uh, these struts these strut mounts you've got one in each corner and the issue that I found was these there's like a screw with a lock nut and at the the front of this bracket here and at the back of the bracket there are two rivets so there's a screw and a lock nut at the front and two rivets at the back so what I found after uh, after 15 1500 to 2000 k's on the dirt that these lock nuts on all four of them actually work themselves loose now unfortunately this one in particular it completely came out so when it came out obviously I've gone to put the unit up and uh, and erect it and because this was was right down here and the nut had fallen down into the into the little thing here into the cavity um, the two uh, rivets at the, the back had almost pulled right out so this this whole bracket was down on an angle sort of down here somewhere so my fix to that was I drilled out the two rivets at the back because they'd already sort of worn loose and to try and push them back in really would have been just a, a half a job so i removed this strut so i undone this bolt i then uh drilled out those two rivets at the at the back and i replaced them uh just finished drilling right through this this member here very carefully because you don't want to push your, your drill bit right up through the roof otherwise that won't be much fun and I uh, went ahead and put nuts and bolts right through there so I just bought some some bolts like this uh, whatever they are a 3 an M5 I think they are and yeah, M5 here we go that's what I used M5 by 25 millimeter and I bought some lock nuts to go with them so some M5 lock nuts and just put them right through so I got rid of the two rivets all together and um, and put a put three bolts through I also had to put some um, just because that was a tiny bit too long um, some some washers on there to bring those those nuts down a little bit because there's very little clearance between your roof and the the top of the nuts what I also done was put Loctite on all of those um, to prevent them from coming loose again well to help 
prevent them. Obviously, when you when you're doing real real work out in the paddock and you you go and covering a lot of ground, a lot of country on rough dirt roads, things do wiggle loose. Even though you've got nylock nuts in place. Um, now I had this one has also come loose, and before it got too bad, what I'd done was just put some Loctite on that and then tighten that right up and the two in the back corners as well was the same story again they those nylock nuts I was able to actually take them off by hand they was that was right on the edge of, of wiggling loose so I've just gone ahead put lock tight on all of those and now and then I tightened them right up so now hopefully there won't be any issues with it now just uh, something about the floor so I've just taken the mattress out while I'm doing a bit of work in here well, one of the things that you've got to be careful of is when you take the mattress out underneath this floor there must be some sort of a I don't know some sort of board or some sort of um, I don't know foam or something that's under underneath this because if you take a look underneath just gotta carefully jump out here. Just bear with me. <coughs> if you take a look underneath, you can see all these these here sections. Now I think that's why there's a there's a floor in there. Now what I'm getting at is when you jump in there, once you take the mattress out and you jump in there. Your knees actually push through the the flooring, and so whatever's under there, it leaves little dent holes that pushes right down into it. So you've got to be careful of that issue. Now the other thing is these bolts. You can just flick it around. There's there's bolts up through this channel, which um, it's like your, your mounting channel bracket. Now there's bolts intermittently through there and some of those are actually quite loose and because they're so loose and you've got this floor in here you, you don't get any access to be able to tighten up these these bolts that are going through there because you can't get to the nut head because it's underneath that floor and then you'd have to you know cut the floor open or something to be able to get access to them so that's something to be aware of as well it's obviously a really uh i would say it's it's really good value this this system this camper for the price i think it's fantastic and especially for a for something that's a, a work thing you can just uh yeah a little bit of money and you, you got yourself something that's heaps better than uh using a swag or even those pop-up um, tent things uh, I've used a lot of that sort of stuff and found it to be terrible if you're uh, if you actually get some rain so that sucks so this thing has been fantastic no leakage no dust ingression uh, it's been really good but um, being that it's a it's obviously a bit cheaper and the the workload that it's been under with all of the traveling that I've been doing on the type of road conditions uh, yeah things come loose pretty quickly so that's just something to be aware of guys if you're uh, out and about and looking at purchasing something like this a rooftop tent that's something that uh, all of my searches on uh, YouTube at least I didn't identify anything where people are having real issues so I thought it's a, a good thing to point out with the the Kings quickie uh, mark 2 uh, um, there are some issues that you you should be aware of or just to keep an eye on if you're doing a lot of a uh, lot of hard road condition driving uh, and saying that I don't uh, go overboard with the with the roads I'm not out there flying around the bush um, driving like a rally champion <laughs> but um, 
yeah, it just basically comes down to the road conditions where unless you're sitting on 20 k's an hour, you just can't take those vibrations out. So anyway, guys, I hope this helps in your decision on your purchase of a hard top camper. And uh, yeah, happy travels.